Hello everyone. Uh, I would like to present my robot arm project, which one I have done as my final year project. Um, I write down a dissertation about machine learning using a game engine Unity, and I have built a script where um, Unity can actually talk with uh, talk with talk with a robot itself, sending commands, and it can actually execute the, all the tasks. So it was a proof of a concept about uh, using a unit as a game engine for robotics to, to teach it, to teach, uh, execute some, um, some tasks. So the person who will be looking for this uh, to buy from me because all the physical arm after I've done, I've done my degree is, is not used and is just staying in a corner. I would like to sell it for another student who either way will be willing to carry on on studies, uh, on research I've done uh, to improve or go in more depth in some certain areas. So uh, I will be sharing my, um, I will be sharing what knowledge, exactly what work was done and, uh, the, and then the person can actually decide to carry on further with this research or actually to try to approach differently or even to do research uh, how it could be what work it was done actually to improve so um, alongside with all the uh, electronics and all the robots which one I made a um, um, sequence of videos will be going after this one uh, I'll be sharing this CAD data as well so um, this, this is a one of the CAD data used in Unity, allowing me to actually um, control it. I have not been using inverse kinematics in Unity. I was actually allowed um, machine learning AI to actually to, to, to learn itself how to move in 3D space, just passing the, all the joints and limitations. And if machine, if AI will try to move outside of limitation, um, it will get you know punishments and etc etc et so it's really great um, I think area where a lot of research could be done using game engine of course it might be a different approach maybe uh, computer science see um, maybe this um, student from this area um, seeing some opportunity to do something with this robot so uh, enjoy the next videos it will be electronics i will co i'll cover all electronics i will cover um the parts axis um i will cover how to to move uh what i would like to point it is i will share the knowledge uh, uh what to understand i will share my support as well to to understand what work was done then I will share some um, my support to understand how to approach, uh, to, sorry, how to connect and use this device. So to understand a bit more electronics and maybe having some issues how to access and so on and so on. I will be supporting with 3D print, 3D print, printing for, um, uh, 3D printing, how to say, services uh, for a really small amount if you just pay for a plastic I use and delivery so can actually if you if you're thinking some particular task you need to do and you need to print something or, or accidentally something broken i have all the parts so we, we, we can actually really quick to reprint and you can carry on with your final year research um, but what i want to mention is that i won't be supporting you on your dissertation your dissertation is your research your ideas your 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 conclusions your results and your you know your your work what you're trying to do i won't be supporting that one um that that's is that should be your um that should be your work to to be done um talking about support um i can promise definitely uh, at least one hour every two weeks that's 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 minimum um i, I, I definitely can stretch myself a bit more um even maybe even we can agree something else what works best for you maybe let's do some um Let's do some um, so brainstorming or not not brainstorming sharing knowledge session. Um, I don't know, one day or whole weekend, and uh, you bring all the questions after you receive this part. Um, well, I'm I'm really would advise to only pick up this one, or we can arrange. I can drop to somewhere in UK um, for extra additional money. Um, P 
PM for any questions, leave in the comments and I'll try, I'll try to answer all of them. Uh, by the way, the person who are buying this one um, definitely goes in the um, VIP Discord, some, uh, <laughs> some chat and um, maybe in the future I try to I try to gather even more people. I, I know some people from Unity themselves uh, who is working in MLA, machine learning um, agency department, and they really would like to join uh, with the students in one um, Unity, sorry, one Discord channel. So I'm arranging this one, and I think we can actually arrange, uh, raise really nice questions and receive. Um, a, a decent and high quality answers from Unity department who is working on MLA themselves. Um, that would be crazy. I think I think if we can reach this one, it would be crazy. So um, leave a comment. Enjoy following week, uh, following we videos, and um, let me know if you're interested in this one. Let's talk about electronics. All the inputs and outputs will be coming from this side of the robot. We have USB to, to, to control Arduino. We have a po main power supply and we have this cable for Xbox DEF and RGB camera to connect for a laptop. Uh, the main, main, when the main power supply comes in, uh, I have installed um, emergency, uh, like, uh, emergency e stop. Uh, I think this is a, one of the main uh, requirements for university to meet health and safety requirements. And um, then we have AC-DC converter for 24 volts. I have installed one uh, fuse here for uh, 24 volts, 15 amps, if I'm not mistaken. Um, need to double check. I'll leave a comment uh, with, a, with a detailed description of all the parts I used. Uh, we have the two fuse installed here, one for Arduino, one for RAMS uh, board. Uh, for uh, as as I just mentioned, them we have a step down um, converter to feed the power for Arduino and RAMS for 12 volts, um, as well as we have another step down controller here for uh, a gripper, um, servo motor. So servo motor works in this in this build as a gripper. Um, Additional to 12 volt step down, we have uh, powering up our lights for, uh, as I mentioned before, for RGB camera. So we have own light source and um, we can actually execute uh, computer vision and not relying with environment lighting, but re relying on own light source. Um, then I have five installed uh, stepper motor controllers. I, TB, I think model is called TB6600. Uh, as I mentioned before, I definitely check the, all the detailed parts and I'll leave in the comments um, all, all, all the parts. And, uh, additional to that, what else I could to add? Oh yeah, uh, all the stepper motor controllers are able to produce up to four amps of power. And this is much more than need for uh, this uh, this execution uh, because this application will be only required to pick up uh, like really um, uh, hollow cubes made from plastic for a 3D printer. They they are empty. They they weigh a few on a few grams, and this actually not requires any like uh, power consumption for robots. So the power level is keeps it lower to not generate uh, the heat. That would be all for electronics. As I mentioned before, we have Xbox V2 fixed on this robot. So it's fixed to the main uh, axis. As all, if you all, when the robot will rotating around, uh, the camera always will see what's happening in the front of the gripper. Um, I would like to mention that this uh, Kinect version 2 camera um, requires Windows 10 and USB 3.0 to actually to to use um, input from this camera for all the data um, to this build, um, including as well as um, adapter from um, Xbox connection 
to the power and USB free to use on a, on a Windows 10. This is, this part is actually required. I know it's a lot of videos in um, in YouTube actually how you can uh, solder it yourself, but I wasn't taking a risk. I just got original uh, Windows provided Microsoft provided um, adapter for this application. So this is a this is a data what it can see. Uh, this is only for depth. Here's a one of the here's a one of the cubes, and you can actually uh, you can actually see where it is. And if we put somewhere here, uh, you can actually measure it. You can actually now it's not color; it's it can measure the distance of that uh, of that particular object. Uh, what I've done um, as well as providing with this robot as well, we actually. We're actually taking one second. I'll show you. We're actually taking a RGB. We're taking actually RGB data, and taking from RGB data, we um, f we will be looking for a particular color co code in this camera. Well, first of all, what we do first of all, we take uh, we take this data. We will uh, enter the, the distance the robot can actually reach, the maximum distance. So let's say, let's say somewhere here is a maximum distance. We measure it. We enter this one. Well, it's already done. And what we do is we, when we go back to RGB camera, we will mask every, every single pixel, which one is further than the robot can actually reach. From all the pixels left, we'll be looking for a particular color. So that's why we, in this project, we have blue color for a gripper. We have red color for uh, cubes, white cubes for a platform, and we have another cube as well as a green. So we have white, red, and the blue colors, which one is quite easy to detect in RGB color scheme, as they have a bit, um, quite a most uh, let's get, how I say different um, core values. Of course, uh, you you can enter as well as some tolerance. So uh, red, but um, like two five two five five zero zero is really red. But you you give some tolerance and you can play with the numbers depending which uh, which suits you most. At the moment, the robot is not powered up. I will make a video shortly. But uh, in this topic, we have a, a light source as well and it's quite bright so then you actually entering the the color when you're entering the value of the color you're looking for you need to look for when you uh, using this light so when you do uh next day when you do this uh this how to say then we'll be working with this project the uh, following day and let's say it's a cloudy day and or sun, a sunny day like today is and your red color suddenly cube doesn't match the tolerance you enter it so that's why it's good to have a bright light and so and try to work on the same, all the time the same color to to improve your computer vision or even you can do, do a different approach i don't know you may be looking for most red color in all what you're finding um it's up to you. Uh, I done with additional lightning, and I always try to do when it's uh, sunset, so there's no sun outside, and uh, I'll can I'll rely on my own light source. Robot itself has a multiple uh, axes. I wanted to cover each of them, one of them. Uh, the first axis label as zero from a array perspective will rotate robot around y axis. Uh, Second axis, labeled as number one, uh, have a heat sink on top to, to uh, dispose some heat, generated heat. Uh, I wasn't sure how long application must be run. They cost a few quids. It's easy to install and why not to do that one. The another thing what you can actually see is a red la label. Um, I had this small stickers from my computer to label the, the cables and so I used here as well. So uh, all the labels, uh, marked with red um, on the bottom they uh, have the same sticker so it's easy to follow which which robot uh, cables coming from where uh, following that one we have another axis uh, maybe move you a bit here we have 
another access with a uh, planetary gearbox inside it will uh, so it's access number three label two uh, it has a blue sticker here uh, rotates this axis up and down so yep the following one uh, is in in inside this one uh, from this, uh, from this, uh, how to say, whence you can uh, to dispose of the heat is the access to actually allowing to rotate uh, this axis. One of the things is I was actually not using this one. Um, this is a bit flaw, I think, of this actually type of a robot, or actually somehow I need to uh, approach this issue differently. But what I done is actually I powered up, and when it's powered up and calibrated, it just holds this position. Uh, it's two two approaches: either way to disconnect the power and just to glue up and use less access for uh, particular reasons, or increase the power and implement in your application. Following one, following next one is axis zero. So one, two, three, four, five. Axis five, a label four. It rotates this gripper up and down, and of course we have the gripper itself, uh, which one I would like to mention. It's a power to hold up to twenty kilogram. It's a, it's a good one. It's a, it's a strong and. It's a strong one and metal one, metal case with a uh, really uh, high quality um, gears. So this robot actually can grip uh, really good parts. Let's talk about this small controlling device. Um, so uh, a release the emergency stop button, all the power goes up and we have 12.1 volt and uh, we have a Marlin it's a BCU it, it does give you a BCU name and there's a robot arm uh, is ready state oh, the state is by default but um, when you connect to your uh, unit application you can actually send a different uh, information to the screen as well uh, if you're familiar with uh, 3D printers, you can actually straight away say this is installed upside down. Yes, and it was requiring some coding to do to actually display everything upside down. But um, this controller works the same as a fr from 3D printer, and we can actually hold on if I can focus in a bit maybe more. So control, oh, uh, prepare, move axis. It's not calibrated at the moment, but we can actually, uh, let's grab Y and we just want to move, I don't know. So we can actually move any particular uh, location uh, measuring from this screen, this uh, screen uh, particular locations. Why it is important? Sometimes you need to measure it, but let's say you want to measure it a, you want to measure it the limits of the axis. So we can actually increase by 10 mils. You can go even one mil, or you can go 0 0.1 mil, and by increasing this number, you can actually find the uh, a particular location from this screen and enter in unity etc like uh, your limits of access what was the maximum you can rotate or the positioning of each of uh, each of this um, posts you want to actually match with the unity so this is a physical location what uh, controllers are seeing it need to match with your digital um, digital twin you can call positioning as well so this is quite quite good important step as well. You have a power kill, killer here, uh, which requires to uh, reset. The reset button it's actually by the Arduino, and because it's in the middle of the thing, so it's possible to 
put your fingers underneath somehow and, and, and press a button. So if you need to reset the Arduino, the easiest way is to do just uh, to cut off the, the power supply and turn it back. Okay, so what well, I can show you by pressing this one, yes. Printer is halted, please reset. And reset button is by the Arduino. For calibration, I have made a few marks and I've I'm following them each single time I start a solution. So the first mark for this axis is actually to match this um, black line with the, the whole of this, um, it's called stepper motor center, yes. Um, second axis, uh, we have a black marker on one side, it must match this side as well. And then calibration is done, when you go in a red position, it goes to this position. It's a full, the, the radio position in my application is a full uh, stretch length um, one direction. So it's like stretch straight. So that before you start, release position and the power is cut off. Because if you cut off power here, it will drop and it can actually damage. So you want to set computer uh, go back to the home position. Let's put. Let's call this is a home position. Yeah, that's the way. Home position when is the axis is uh, not holding any weight and the power can could be cut off um, without risking damaging the robot. Following axis, you can see the printed arrow matching the black uh, black marker bl black line over there. And finally, we have. Another, another trying, another. Let's see. One second. Yep. Yeah. this way. So yeah, we can see a a triangle here. Hold on, one second. Oh, yeah, that's, that's better now. So the triangle matching the the black line as well. And when we go in the start position, it should to rotate and match this one. If it doesn't match, that's mean my. Um, my synchroni synchronization haven't worked out and my digital twin is not synchronized and not in level with a, a physical robot arm. Let's talk about synchronizing and uh, starting up this um, solution. Uh, one of the tips I would like to say is for communication, you actually manually need to enter which one COM you're using. Uh, in another word, uh, which one USB port you are using to con connecting this Arduino. Easiest way to find your uh, COM uh, number is uh, just go to Arduino uh, uh, Arduino software, and you can actually see any active Arduino connected alongside with the COM um, COM number. So. Uh, from a keyboard, we have a few. We have a few functions uh, bind to the keys. Uh, we have uh, end uh, button, which one uh, turns off the power for, uh, to the um, stepper motors. Uh, be careful pressing this button because uh, if the robot is lift by pressing this button, the power is cut off. It will fall down, and uh, it could potentially damage the robot itself. Um, I don't say I won't say it will, but it it potentially can. Uh, we have uh, H letter for uh, going home. Actually, I will show each button. So to start solution, we have uh, R button to reset. So then um, then all the markers is matching as a home position, um, which one I covered just just before this video. Uh, by pressing R letter. Uh, for stands for reset, it will uh, go into straight line. Yes. Now this is a point where you can actually see is uh, is all synchronizing markers is ma me matching, and that is mean that our digital uh, robot arm is matching our physical robot arm. If it is this is the case, we press space bar to confirm that. That unlocks us actually to control robot arm and start doing pretty stuff. Another button which one we can use as well, it's a home button. 
So home button will retrieve first one axis and then retrieve other two axis, no avoiding hit to any posts. So uh, going back to going back to reset. And then I hit space bar. We synchronize them both again. So uh, from a keyboard perspective, we're using double SD, Q and A. Double SD to move around and uh, Q and A is only to open and close uh, gripper. From, from Xbox controller, uh, Xbox controller is implemented as well. So you can actually, you can actually implement quite a lot uh, functionality from here because you can actually um, um, save some locations and later you can actually retrieve that locations by pressing button uh, in my case I just done really simple as a peer, just peer proof of concept uh, this left uh, left steering stick I don't know how it's called uh, is to control the robot itself so you can control that one in a, in a two directions if you want and so on and we have uh, left uh, left shoulder and uh, right shoulder to open and close the gripper uh, it does not open and close because in digital twin and a virtual robot arm is nothing what to grip so every single time when machine learning is running uh, if robots try to close the grip, but there's nothing to what to grab, we punish him, uh, giving some uh, negative reward. And robots, um, AI will remember this option: do not grab something if it's not, is nothing in the front. So let's try grab a virtual cube. I think I got too far away. Oh. If you if you hit something, it's really uh, it's really hard to say from a three D perspective. It I think it would be easier if we just um, attach the camera to the robot's arm so we can actually move around. But for a learning perspective, when you have like twenty of robots and so on and so on, the touch camera doesn't make any sense. But by the way, machine learning re uh, happens in. Um, increased time speed so it's happening really fast you don't want to touch the camera and start moving around so uh, I can confirm that the space bar it's calibrated so it unlocks to me movement oh we have red and grab a cube and let's go to release somewhere else. That's it. That's the most basic uh, controls from Xbox. As well as well uh, from a keyboard. Yeah, and don't forget when you're finishing, press H letter, home button. It's uh, go one axis, then goes uh, over two axis, and the when the movement is completed, uh, the unit is sending another signal to turn off the power of uh, of uh, stepper motors as well. So it's no more powered up. Okay, that's it. Would be about physical robot arm. I hope so you enjoyed it, all the videos I have just watched about this robot arm. Um, if you still have some questions, and I believe you definitely have, um, it's, it's really hard to, to cover every single bit. Um, it's really hard to cover every single bit about this robot in just a few videos. I, I think it's just basics what I just covered. And uh, I think the, the, main, the main purpose of this video was like, you, you, you generate generate to you uh, some ideas you after this video should to uh, should you ha have at least basic understanding what this robot possibilities are where you can use in, uh, in your research or how you can actually even implement and implement into another research like uh, I don't know if you're looking into 
um, some um, um, what's called manufacturing revolution 4.0 something like this I call this digital twin one of the, or one of the, another names and um, maybe you from manufacturing or as I mentioned or um, computer science and you you you, you can actually seeing another use case of this robot yeah just just pm uh, leave a comment and thanks for your time um i'm glad i'm glad if you enjoyed if not let me know wh where i can improve for videos <laughs> thank you very much and